And for this week on Cyber School, we're going to talk about kind of a little bit more about the SIP paging 2570 amplifier. But this week, we're going to talk a little bit more about actually deploying the unit. You know, last week, we kind of covered what the unit is and, you know, some of the different speaker offerings that we had. But this week, we're going to talk a little bit more about actually deploying it, meaning how you would mount it, how you pick the actual gauge of wire that you're using, which is better, 25 volts, 70 volts. So hopefully after, you know, watching those two videos, kind of the intro to the product and this one kind of explaining how to use the product, you'll have a good idea on how to use the product. So with that, let's go ahead and get started here. So of course the SIP paging 2570 volt amplifier is of course a rack mountable or, you know, wall mountable style unit. Of course you can take the, uh, you know, the mounts off and just put it on your desk with uh, the included little rubber feet that we put in there. But I imagine most folks are going to rack mount it with some folks wall mounting it. Um, do keep in mind, of course, that this is uh, differing from most cyber data products. It does not require POE. It requires a regular AC power connection. You do have to plug this into the mains. It is completely different from every other cyber data product that you get that you can just plug into your POE network infrastructure and you know, you're off and running. This time you actually do have to plug this thing into power. Um, and another big distinction from this is it connects to a single run of analog speakers that are all going to be connected back to the amplifier. So that's just some ground basis as you're kind of designing for actually using this thing. You got to figure out where you're going to put it how you're going to power it and understand that it's a little bit different in terms of network infrastructure requirements as compared to your standard cyber data products. When you're working with our speakers, again, differing with typical cyber data products, these are non POE devices. They don't plug into your network and they don't need to plug into your network. These are connected with your traditional two pair uh, speaker wire where, you know, you've got your, you know, your hot, your negative, your black and red, you know, your, uh, your white and red sometimes depending on, you know, what kind of cabling you're working with. It's regular audio wire. You don't need no cat specifications or anything for this. And these are typically wired in a serpentine pattern, meaning each device is going to be connected to the next one, so on and so forth. A connects to B, B connects to C, so on and so forth down the chain. So it makes wiring these a whole lot easier. Um, do keep in mind that, you know, picking the correct voltage is super important on the speaker and the amplifier. It's not really going to hurt the amplifier, but you could blow out your speakers when you go and try to make an announcement. If all of your speakers are set for 25 volt mode and the amplifier is set for 70 volt mode, uh, that's you're going to get a little bit of noise out of it and then not so much. Um, so you'll definitely want to be really careful when you're actually deploying all of these. It's something to be cognizant of as you're deploying this. It's a little bit more complicated than, you know, your typical network speaker that you plug it in. You make sure it has the right power from your network switch and you're done. You're, you're not really going to blow it up with power settings where with these you absolutely can. And of course, the other part with it, you need to select the correct wattage tap on the particular speaker for the area that it's going to go into. As you can see there with our top image, uh, you know, that speaker, uh, it is currently set to 1.25 watts. If you're putting that in a very loud environment, you might not be able to hear it. So you might want to go for a louder tap setting on that, something potentially like, you know, 10 watts or maybe even 30 watts if you really want that thing to be loud. But of course, as you're picking the wattage, you know, of course, more is better. More is always louder. But you've only got a certain budget of wattage that's available on the actual amplifier, and you need to be cognizant of that as well. So there's a lot of things and a lot of things, you know, you really kind of want to write down or jot down as you're kind of planning everything out you go and make sure that you're going to have a successful installation there. So since we kind of talked about, you know, really the two important parts, you know, A, the amplifier and B, the speakers, there's another kind of important bit that you'll want to consider there, and that's wiring. So when you're wiring these products, you know, of course, you know, with, you know, a lot of cyber data products that were installed beforehand, a lot of folks used kind of stripped Ethernet cable, your Cat5, Cat6, you know, you pull one of the pairs out, that's good enough for some connections. Not what cyber data recommends, but if it works, it works. You know, uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, as the old saying goes. But when you're dealing with these speakers, they're going to be a little bit more different because they're not going to be using, again, that Cat5 or Cat6 cabling. You're going to be using some type of speaker wire. CyberData does recommend shielded speaker wire. It's going to be super important for and super helpful for reducing any 
kind of noise um, getting into the actual wire itself and you're dealing with ro long runs of wire like this and it's by other potential sources of electromagnetic radiation that can affect your sound quality so you really want to opt for that um, shielded speaker wire whenever possible it's a little bit more expensive and it's definitely worthwhile if it saves you a whole bunch of potential troubleshooting time and then rewiring time if you go when you install regular unshielded speaker wire and then you're just you know hit with a whole bunch of issues spend that little bit of extra money on the shielded speaker wire and save yourself the headache there well, when you're picking a wire gauge the, you can go you know basically as thick as a 12 um, wire gauge which is a relatively thick wire um, and the best thing to think of you know it's not uh, you know not you don't necessarily want the thinnest possible um, you know the thicker wire basically gives you a longer run length just because um, you get less signal loss as you go um, down the potential line so if you're t really trying to take advantage of a proper 70 volt system it can go for almost a little bit over half a mile of actual distance in ascent in a 70 volt configuration um, you're really going to want to go for that you know 12 gauge wire but if you're not going to be going that that kind of a distance you could probably get by with you know a 14 or 16 uh you know wire gauge so that's really stuff you want to plan out you know how long of an actual wire wire run are you going to be doing and that can really impact the particular wire that you're going to be working with if you're just wiring up a whole bunch of speakers saying you know an auditorium or a rel relatively small warehouse you can probably get by with 14 or maybe even 16 gauge wire but if you're doing a really big facility and doing speakers all the way up and down you know say a, a you know a large manufacturing area you'll probably just want to go with that 12 gauge wire just to be safe next we get to you know picking between your 25 volt and your 70 volt you know which is the right option well you know really both are going to have a similar voltage drop off level over the approved run length of course when you're dealing with 25 volt it is a substantially smaller run length as compared to a 70 volt regardless of the wire gauge that you use of course as we you know discussed in our last slide your wire gauge does really come into an impact for your run length capability there um, but so does the um, the uh, voltage that you use there you know if you're using that 25 or 25 volt you're really not getting far you know you're dealing with the hundreds of feet whereas 70 volts you're dealing with thousands of feet so it can really make a big difference there. But 70 volt isn't always the best option because you're pushing a lot more voltage and you know a relatively higher frequency um, you know, current through those. 25 volt has a you know quite a bit higher potential for shock, and so 25 volt has a lower potential risk for you know electric shock. So that's something to be concerned of, uh, you know, concerned and cognizant of. And when you're dealing with both of these wiring, whether it's 25 volt or 70 volt, it has it's basically considered class two wiring. So you don't need to put a conduit or anything in it. You know, if you're dealing with stuff outside of the states, it's popular really outside of North America, like even up in Canada and Mexico, they do you know 70 volt speaker systems. And you know, basically the rest of the world, they use 100 volt systems, which do have to be actually put into um, a conduit when you're routing the cabling through there, just because you know, 100 volts is substantially more electricity. Um, so you'll find really here in the States and North America in general, 70 volts is gonna be what most folks end up opting for, because you know, really does the you know shock risk isn't too much of a big deal it's still there but most of the time you know you're not dealing with you know frayed open cables that people can easily touch because speakers are usually you know mounted high up on a wall or in the ceiling or connected to a horn that's you know 25 feet in the air you're not really going to be interacting with the wire to potentially shock yourself so generally here in the states in north america 70 volt is going to be the more popular option because it gives you a substantially longer run length capability then the really next big thing that we need that we need to talk about, of course, that now that we've covered both speakers, amplifiers, wiring, and 25 volt or 70 volt mode, you have to consider the actual maximum load of the amplifier. And you'll see a lot of different amplifiers out there that are marked as you know 50 watt, 100 watt, 250 watt, 300, 600 watt. That's basically your theoretical value. It's not your practical max load generally when folks are advertising the wattage on an amplifier that is the maximum output capability of that amplifier and 
you never want that thing running at maximum. You want some kind of an overhead to deal with different audio signals that you can work with. So the actual practical load that you want to put it in an amplifier is 80% of the theoretical max load. So that way you've got 20% buffer to deal with, you know, any potential clipping issues or anything that could come with the different audio signals that you pass through there. Giving yourself 20% of headroom buffer is really ideal. And the way that you calculate that for different amplifiers is you take the max load, the advertised load of, you know, what that thing can support and multiply that by 0.8. So that way you get 80%, which will be your practical maximum load for that particular amplifier. So that way you can go and budget everything out. So now let's work through this in an example. And this is just an example that we have from one of our different speakers that we're going to be offering with the 2570 uh, paging amplifier. So first, you're going to want to determine the number of speakers that you're working with because, you know, that's important as you're building out your table here. You can see that in kind of our first column there in our bottom right hand corner. That's going to be our quantity. Then you want to figure out what you're going to have all of the, those different speakers tapped for. So that way you can figure out the actual total per style of speaker. So you can see in our example there, we've got three different styles of speakers. The three that we're offering are ceiling mount speakers, our wall mount speakers, and our horns. And we've got 13 speakers. Our six ceiling speakers are tapped for 3.75 watts. So six times 3.75 is 22.5 watts. For our wall mounts, this one's very easy. We've got four speakers all tapped at 10 watts, gives us 40 watts. And finally, we've got our horns all tapped for 15 watts because they're in an outdoor environment. As you can kind of see there in the picture, we're kind of illustrating a parking lot. Hopefully that makes sense with those kind of hatched uh, uh, yellow lines there. And those horns total up to 45 watts. So now that you've got the total of all the different speakers and their actual wattage requirements, you can go and come up with your total there, which is 107.5 watts. So if you were deploying this example setup that we have here with the 2570 amplifier, you could work with either our 25 volt or our 70 volt mode. And the differentiation factor on what you're going to end up picking is really your run length there, which we really don't have illustrated in the diagram there. But depending on the run length, you could easily go with 25 volt mode. But if you wanted to play it safe, you could go with 70 volt mode and you have plenty uh, you have plenty of room for, you know, adding additional speakers in there as we've got, you know, basically a delta of, you know, a little over 200 watts to play with if you wanted to adjust any of the taps on the speakers or even add more speakers. So that kind of gives you an idea of how you go and you plan everything out. Again, you want to determine the number of speakers that you're working with, their tap selection, and then you want to calculate how much power is going to be required by each style of a speaker and make sure that that is below 80% of the maximum capacity of the amplifier. So now to kind of summarize everything as you're deploying a constant voltage system, 70 volt configuration is best for really generally everything here in the States, but really it's better for larger coverage area. You're not gaining any extra features by going for 70 volt, of course, just longer run length. Um, wiring is just, you know, simple, uh, you know, speaker to speaker to speaker, very, very easy as compared to say a cat five or cat six wiring where it's, you know, a wire to each speaker and then to, you know, each, uh, you know, network switch that they're going to be plugging into. Um, you don't really have to consider as much the maximum run length that you get with the, um, uh, uh, cat five, cat six cabling that you run into that's about a hundred meters. You don't really have to worry about that. So if you go and plan everything properly, you determine again the number of speakers that you have, the wattage that you're going to be using, the cable um, gauge that you're going to be using, 25 or 70 volt mode that you're going to set everything in. If you plan everything properly, it makes the installation as easy as possible. And just the key thing to remember is you're shooting for 80% of whatever that advertised wattage is for your total budget um, for your uh, wattage for your new constant voltage speaker system.